thanks very much for joining us today um, as Lauren has just welcomed you um, for the back to school series of webinars that we're doing today. I've said um, this is with Scottish Book Trust today. So I'm Rachel, I'm from Scottish Book Trust. Um, I'm one of the school communities managers there. Um, we're also joined by my colleague Hannah today who will be on the chat. So please feel free to get involved in the discussion um, and we'll get to speak to you from there. There she goes, hello everyone. <laughs> So I'm just going to share my screen with you just now to get the slides up. Okay, um, as Lauren said, this webinar today is on bridging picture books and chapter books. So this session is aimed at families and children in middle primary, so generally age seven to nine. But we hope that there'll be, you'll be able to take away some ideas that would be suitable for older children as well. Um, as you can see, we're using Zoom today, so we've got a few different functions that you can use there. We've already mentioned the chat function, so we'll be asking you to use that today if you'd like to share some discussion and ideas with us, that would be great. Um, and there's also a Q&A function, so if you'd like to add any questions as we go, um, please feel free to add them in there and we'll uh, answer them as we go. So first of all, a little bit about Scottish Book Trust, um, if you've not come across us before. We're an independent national charity that promotes reading and writing to all ages and stages across Scotland. We run programmes for everyone, from babies to adults, and aim to change lives through reading and writing, ensuring everyone from all backgrounds has access to books. You might be familiar with some of our programmes already, such as Book Week Scotland and Bookbug, but we also run a schools programme, which is full of opportunities for five to 16 year olds and includes events, activities, and resources for families to enjoy as well. We run the First Minister's Reading Challenge, bring authors to schools through the Scottish Friendly Children's Book Tour, broadcast author events with BBC Authors Live, and gift bags of books and materials to every primary one, two and three child as part of the Read Right Count campaign. Whether your child is a keen or reluctant reader, we're going to share some tips today for encouraging reading through bridging between picture and chapter books. If you have children aged seven to nine, um, you may have found that they've maybe experienced a wee drop in their reading, even if they've loved books be before when they were younger, or they may have been quite a keen reader and maybe not reading as much since the schools closed during this lockdown period. It's difficult to know which books to point them towards when they're at this stage, um, as chapter books can sometimes seem quite text heavy, um, but the alternative doesn't seem challenging enough, so it's, it's hard, to, hard to know what to point them towards. So we hope that today we'll be able to give you some tips and recommendations on some titles that will engage your child and be quite interesting for them, but also how to use these books at home and some activities that you can do with them as well. So today's here's just a wee overview of what we'll be chatting about today. So the session will include some practical tips and book recommendations for families, um, including some illustrated chapter books, graphic novels and comics. How to get the most of this type of book at home um, with some activities to try out together. And where you can access uh, support and online resources, including the Scottish Book Trust website. As I said before, you'll be, you, please feel free to add any questions you have over the course of the session in the Q&A and we'll get around to answering them later on. Um, or you can add them into the chat as we go and my colleague Hannah will hopefully be able to answer any that you might have then. So we know that reading is a really key skill for children and young people um, and they're, it's really central to their learning. But reading for pleasure has its own benefits, um, which we'd like to highlight to you just now. So we know that research shows that pupils who read for pleasure are much more likely to do better in school and even in subjects like maths and sciences and they're more empathetic to the world around them. Reading for pleasure is also a proven way of reducing stress and improving the health and well-being of pupils, which we know is extremely important at the moment especially. New research has shown that reading has also provided vital support for children during the pandemic as well, um, and it can really help support children in a fun and accessible way for the return to school. And all of this is really important, of course, um, and it can be a great reason to make time for reading, but just as important, or maybe more so, is the way that reading can make children feel. It's fun and exciting and it sparks their curiosity. It takes them to places real and imagined and opens up the world around them in a different way for every book they read. And as parents, you can introduce your children to these worlds and share these stories together, which is always a wonderful thing. So we'd like to take the opportunity just to start off this session with a bit of a discussion, um, a bit of a wee icebreaker for you um, and hear more about who's joined us today as well. So please feel free to answer these questions in chat and share with us if there are any particular books that you and your child enjoy or the particular books that you enjoy. Um, maybe you've read a book, uh, maybe you have a book that is always requested at bedtime, 
Um, or was there a family favourite to be read aloud when they were younger? Um, please let us know in the chat. Um, we're always uh, interested to see what books um, people find their favourites, um, if, if there's any similarities, if there's any differences. Um, at our last session we had Roald Dahl, obviously, one of the classics, um, but also the likes of Super Tato. So <laughs> all books are good, so <laughs> please just let us know. Um, and also I'd be interested to hear if you've come across any comics or illustrated chapter books before as well. Have you ever bought any or come across them in the library? Um, have you and your child tried any and if you enjoyed them? Um, not to worry if you haven't. Um, they are quite a um, recent development in the, in the book world. So if you've not come across them, that's fine. Um, but it'd be interesting to know if you have. So please feel free to share your thoughts in the chat. Oh, and I should say before you, if you are typing a message in the chat, make sure and change your setting to all panelists and attendees so that everyone else can see your messages as well. Um, so it's not just the panelists. Ah, someone just said Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, it's such a classic, isn't it? I feel like that's one that has kind of run through the generations as well. It's, it's, um, it's timeless. And there's always the films as well, which is always a good way to link in with your child's interests as well. If they really like a particular film or TV show, then there's maybe a book that could that's similar or um, an adapted version, and that's that's always good too. Ah, Hannah's mentioning Dear Professor Whale, and um, that makes a wee appearance later on. Um, but it's a very, very good chapter, uh, illustrated chapter book. Harry Potter in this house, yeah, yeah. I think that time, it's quite timeless as well. I remember Harry Potter being one of my favourites when I was younger. Um, and it's already, it's still as prominent as ever, um, if, if, more, if not more so. Um, Beauty and the Beast as well, yeah. Quite kind of classic stories. Um, ah, I'm trying to encourage Famous Five, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember getting Famous Five when I was younger as well. Initially, I was a wee bit reluctant. I think I was, I'm not sure why it was, but once I got into it, absolutely loved them. So just keep, hopefully a bit more, keep keeping with the encouragement will hopefully get you there. <laughs> and how to train your dragons. Well, that's also one that makes an appearance today. So that's interesting. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's two illustrated chapter books that have been mentioned um, that we're actually, yeah, we'll, we'll be um, mentioning later on as well. 104 Story Treehouse, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's great, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, but please feel free as we go through the session to continue um, adding any ideas or um, if you have any thoughts about any of the things we're talking about, please feel free to put them in the chat and share, um, share your thoughts. We always, we always like to see the discussion. Um, so I'll just move on now. So when we're talking about bridging between picture and chapter books, um, what does this actually look like? It's quite a um, general phrase, the bridging, but it, it quite literally has been coined bridge books, a lot of these books, um, and their format is perfect for children who are aged generally six to ten, um, who have started to move on from picture books when they were younger, um, but are finding ch more challenging books a little bit uninteresting or a bit intimidating, or maybe not being as engaged with them as they were before with uh, picture books. So these type of books, so bridge books or illustrated chapter books, um, as we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, these type of books are really great for engaging children who are maybe a bit more reluctant to read. Um, even if they were quite engaged with reading before, they're, they're really good for um, engaging younger readers. And being able to read a book in this format is really good for building confidence and introducing your child to longer texts while still being able to use pictures for guidance. So it's really, really great for building up their confidence and their ability. They might be seeing their peers and their friends reading longer books, but they maybe don't feel confident enough to go to that yet. But giving them an illustrated chapter book or one of these kind of bridge books means that they have a book that's of similar length generally and um, it's just got a bit, little bit less text but more simple and illustrations throughout as well so they can use them for guidance too. As I said this is a growing market for these books um, which is great because it recognises that children need more selection in this format, they need more variety which is really good. So generally bridge books and illustrated chapter books are a little bit longer than general picture books, um, but with simple text and illustrations, 
and the stories and characters um, have younger readers in mind. They are genuinely aimed at emerging readers, which we've just kind of mentioned is just when children are in that stage between moving on from chapter uh, picture books but aren't quite at longer chapter book length, so it's kind of aimed at them. Um, which means children are, who are starting to read books with more text but maybe aren't quite ready for the full length chapter books. Um, and they're often a, a gateway to encouraging children to read independently as well. So when thinking about selecting one of these books for your child, base it on their interests, um, whether that's books they've enjoyed before or any non-reading activities that they really like, like football or dancing, anything like that. Um, try, and, try and link it in with that if you can when you're looking at books um, to select for them. And a tip for supporting your child when they're bridging between picture and chapter books is also to encourage them to read aloud to you or to them, or you to them actually, um, and to do so together as well. You can take turns reading a page or a chapter, because these are generally quite short in, these, in the, these books of this format, and ask them questions about what they think will happen next, how the character might be feeling, why they thought the event unfolded how it did. So just as you're going through it, just continually asking those questions and encourage the encourage discussion. Also encourage them to share your point of, their point of view with you as well. And share yours too, share what you think about what's happening as well. Don't let, let it be, be one-sided, sure, make sure there's a discussion between both of you. Reading aloud is so important for reading comprehension and it's also really important to do even if your child has started reading independently. I think a lot of the time we think if you can read, if, if a young person can read on their own then that's, that's them, they, can, they don't need to be read aloud to anymore but um, reading aloud is so so important even when they are reading independently. There's so much that they can gain from it and there's a lot you can gain from it too. It will help you to find other books that they might enjoy as well um, and create really meaningful reading experiences for you both. So don't be afraid to reread re books as well. If there's books that um, your child's really enjoyed before, you know, saying about like Harry Potter in, in someone's house, don't be afraid to go back to them. Um, there's so much that can be gained from rereading books as well. There's always opportunities to take away new learning from a book, whether that's rereading it from a different character's perspective, writing about what would happen after the story ends. Um, so for instance, yeah, with Harry Potter, what do you think happens at the end of the series? Um, would, you, would you want to start writing a wee um, a story about Harry's son um, at the end of book seven, that there's so much that can be gained from it. Or you can also summarise the book to make it sound as exciting as possible for a family member. So if you have sibl if your child has siblings or um, other family members and they're wanting to summarise about the book they've been reading, um, tell them, get them to make it sound as exciting as possible. That's, that's a really good activity to do. So here you might recognise a couple of these, as a couple of them have been mentioned already, which is great. And um, here's a selection of illustrated chapter books, which are all very different, as you can see from the covers, but the content as well is very, very different. There's a wealth of choice in these books that will suit every reader, um, whether they are more confident or a bit more reluctant about reading. So I'm just going to give you a wee summary about each of them, just in case that's of interest. So Midge and Mo, just in the top right there, is all about facing starting somewhere new. It's about a little boy who starts a new school. Um, and he's really struggling with it. He feels like there's a rain cloud over his head the whole time. And he's, he was really struggling with facing all of these different emotions and feelings that arise when you're, when you're starting something new and feeling a bit worried about it. And he meets a girl who wants to be his friend and she's just so smiley and happy and um, she really wants to be his friend, but he's not quite sure. Um, so it's a story all about feelings and friendships and dealing with change. So it's really good, even one for now actually, probably quite good for dealing with a lot of emotions that children might be dealing with at the moment. Dear Professor Whale, um, which Hannah mentioned already, uh, it's structured in a series of letters and it brings penguins, whales and seals together in the famous Whale Point Olympics, <laughs> which sounds brilliant, um, and where the winners are friendship and humour. So this is a really lovely, funny book, um, really lighthearted and wonderful. So again, that might be quite a nice one if your child's been feeling a wee bit anxious during this time or um, a bit anxious about going back to school. This was quite a, a nice one to nice one to try. The Cat and the King there um, by Nick Sherat uh, tells the story of a gentle, unworldly king and his very clever cat. So that's quite an interesting dynamic, even just from that. Um, this is a very funny story and it should be quite familiar for children if they've been reading Nick Sherat's books before because of the iconic illustrations. So that might be quite a nice, nice option for them. How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, someone mentioned that earlier very famous children's story by Presta Cowell um, about a Viking boy and his tiny dragon Toothless. So there's a full series of these books too, I think there's like 10 books in this series. 
um, which is good because then it means if the child likes it, they can keep going. There's more for them to enjoy. And as well, there's the films, of course. Um, so if they really like the films, then this is a good one to point them towards too. And finally, we've got Shifty McGifty and Slippery Sand there, um, which is a really good first book to introduce, actually. Um, this is a compiled of three short stories. So while they're in one book, it's three different shorter stories within it. So that might be quite an interesting format to, to try out if you're emerging into illustrated chapter books. Um, and they're also accompanied by really colourful illustrations. Um, and again, these characters might be quite familiar from the picture books that uh, Tracy Cordray and Stephen Renton do. Um, and it's really great for engaging children, even those that are a bit more confident as well. You can also use books as a point for conversation as well. So if you're thinking about, if you see one of these and think they might be quite interesting to try out with your child, I'll just speak to them about it, ask them what they might think about it, what they like to think about the cover, if they think it might be something they'd enjoy, um, and keep that conversation going when they're reading too, so that you know if they do like it and what other things they might enjoy as well. Um, and now I'm just going to speak to you briefly about graphic novels and comic books as well, because these are quite different to illustrated chapter books, but they kind of come into that category between bridging, between picture books and chapter books. Um, they're a really great format for bridging as well for children. They're great because they can help to break up the text similarly to illustrated chapter books, um, and they enable children to interpret what they're reading through the pictures and visual breaks and in information. Um, so these ones probably rely more on the images um, to tell the story more so than illustrated chapter books. But that's great as well because it encourages the children to use lots of different skills in that way too. So the combination of the short text that they use and the images gives children the ability to build the vocabulary um, because they can see the words in context as well. So that can be a really helpful guide for them as they're reading them. These are also a really great outlet for creative writing. Um, and they encourage different skills to be used compared with traditional writing activities. Um, so a lot more attention and detail has to go into the images as, as they're also telling the story. So it's not all about what's in the text, it's also what the images are telling you as well. So it encourages you to think about it in a different way. Um, and yeah, and even more so than the text, uh, the expressions and information has to be shown in the images as well as the writing. So you have to be able to tell what's happening from the images as well. It takes the concept of show, don't tell to a new level and this encourages a wealth of literacy skills it's, and it's also really good fun for them as well. Some books are also quite interactive in this format in graphic novels and comics um, such as Chris Judge's Create Your Own series or Jim Smith's, Jim Smith's Barry Loser series. Um, these books invite the reader to add colour, stories, additional words or even rip pages out of the book too um, in order to continue the story so it's books that are have a variety of prompts in them as well and um, to encourage the child to keep going through the story and creating the story themselves but with a bit of guidance. So if you're wanting to introduce some illustrated chapter books to your child here's um, some introductory activities that you could try and um, here are two quite well known illustrated chapter books so on the left there we have Chris Riddell's uh, Autoline at the Sea so Chris Riddell is probably one of the most famous children, uh, children's illustrators. Um, and then on the right we have um, The Brilliant World of Tom Gates by Liz Bichon, uh, which is probably one of the most uh, famous illustrated chapter books um, that you can, you can come across and it's very, very um, well loved by children. But as you can see, while these are both similar format, they're quite different um, in appearance. So quite, quite a good thing to do with your child is to ask questions about the books, even just from the covers. So you could ask them, what do they think of the book cover? And um, what does it tell them about the book? Are they able to kind of gauge what the books might be about from the covers? Does the book cover match or give a clue to the illustrations inside too? So they might look quite different, the illustrations. What, what, might, that, what, that, what might that mean? Uh, do they notice any common factors between the books as well? That'd be, that's quite a good one. Um, could they tell that they're similar books just by looking at them? Or do they seem quite different? Um, do they like or dislike the light and the out? That's always a good one as well because um, and encouraging them to ask why they don't like why they do or don't like it. Um, for instance, you know, they might really like the look of the Tom Gates one because the illustrations are quite doodle like and um, kind of scrapbooky, whereas Chris Riddell's one's a bit more not as doodly, um, a bit more kind of grown up illustrations, I suppose. Um, so that's quite an interesting one to talk about. What do they think of the illustrations? Yeah, just there, like, do they 
like the doodles or do you like the more um, artistic illustrations? And is there a different author and illustrator or are they the same person? That's quite an interesting one too because if you've been working with picture books quite a lot you might have come across a majority having different authors and illustrators but in this instance there might be more that are the same and what does that mean? Does that mean um, what does that mean for them um, to, be, to be able to be an author and an illustrator doing one book? So you could do this activity together as well um, and encourage them to make notes on their thoughts of the book um, and write down answers to each of these questions or you could just have a discussion about it um, and share your opinions about the books too, what you think from looking at them too and see if they're different from your child's. Do you agree or disagree with them? Um, would you like to read them too? Um, if so or if not, why? And that just keeps the conversation going around them and as I said before this will really help you gain ideas for what kind of things your child might like to read um, and one, find ones that you're probably more engaged with as well. So if your child is feeling a bit reluctant about, about trying out some new books um, or are they they're in, need of, in need of some confidence in their ability, especially with the return to school coming up, it might be a little bit of an anxious time for them. You can encourage them to take part in some activities related to comic writing as well. Children who are maybe a bit more reluctant to write traditionally or kind of prose um, in the kind of traditional sense or don't engage with books with heavy texts can really become inspired by the creativity and freedom that comics and illustrated books can bring. You can provide them with some interactive books like we mentioned there. Here's one of the ones um, there by Chris Rudge, Create Your Own Superhero Epic. So as you can see there, it's saying, oh no, we're missing a superhero, quick, draw one in. So you draw your superhero in and then as you go through the story, there's more and more prompts. So for instance, um, say, say like a, a lizard is attacking the city, what do you do? And then you have to draw your um, superhero doing something, things like that. So it's just um, giving them creative prompts as they go, but also giving them the freedom to draw what they want to as well. So they could create their own um, uh, adaption of a text, like a, um, if they what, really like a film or a book, they could make up a comic related to that. Um, or they could use these interactive books to help them follow creative tasks or they could create their own comic completely of their own imagination. That's great too. Um, let them think outside the box and take ownership over their own learning as well. That'll really help them um, get engaged with this type of activity. So when they become the creator, they are encouraged to think quite critically about the ways that they want to show things, especially in comic format, whether that's character, setting, dialogue, um, they also have to think about colour choices and things, um, emotions, thought bubbles for the characters um, to get, convey what's happening in the images. Like we said before, so much of the story is told through the images, so we have to really put a lot of attention and detail into the images. And if they're using their own ideas, they can create their own style too. So if they've got their own style, can they continue that throughout the, the story of the comic so that you can recognise it's the, it's the same story from the style? Do the images link with the text as well? Can you tell what's happening from the images? Um, or can you tell from the text what's happening in the images? And yeah, can you tell what's happening from the images themselves? Can you, can you, see the, can you tell the story just from that alone? So this is a really, that's a really creative way of just getting them to start thinking about writing in different ways um, and encouraging them to draw as well. It's really creative and fun for them. And it might be quite a good way of getting them to think in the way that they'll need to when they go back to school, but in quite an accessible and fun way. Um, so one of the key opportunities illustrated chapter books can present as a family as well, if you're doing things together, is the different interpretations you can pick up from the illustrations. Um, I wanted to get you all involved in an activity now, if that's okay. <laughs> Probably looking at the screen wondering what's going to happen here. Um, so I wanted you to try out some illustrating yourself or a wee doodle or something like that, see how you get on with it. So for inspiration, this is a page from um, Adventure Duck versus Power, uh, versus Power Pug. Um, which is by Steve Cole and Alexi Bitskoff. Um, so this is an illustration from one of the pages there. And as you can see, I'll just read it out to you so that you can get the talk context. Um, so he says, how dare you, cried Power Pug, wheezing in outrage. I have always been this size. I am a giant among pugs. AD nodded. Right. So, and you can see that that's what's happening from the illustration, that Power Pug is, is uh, he's angry, he's, he's so annoyed with him for thinking, for, with, uh, with AD for thinking that he's, He's small um, and you can tell from his face he's quite smug you know he's saying uh-huh yeah sure yeah wh whatever you say um, so what do you think will happen next do you think that um, Parapog will get even more annoyed he'll grow in size or 
what do you, what do you think will happen? Do you think ED will saunter off um, quite smugly? Um, tell us what you think um, in the chat, what might happen next, or if you want to, you could try and do your own illustration inspired by this or just something completely of your own imagination as well. Um, but I want to, you to try when you're doing this and get your children involved as well if you've got your children with you. I want you to try and do a continuous line drawing together. As a, this is a, um, a, an approach that some illustrators take when they're, when they're doing doodling. So you're not allowed to take your pen off the page. So you have to draw your doodle um, or your illustration without taking your pen off the page. See how you get on with that. Um, you can ch challenge your child to draw one thing while you draw another as well. You don't have to draw the same thing. You can ask them to come up with something themselves too. Um, so if you have to add something to your drawing that you've gone past, um, go back over the lines to, to um, get to that bit again to do what you need to do. Um, so I'll give you a couple of minutes there. So yeah, just you can, whatever suits you. If you want to let us know in the chat what you think will happen next after this page um, or try a wee continuous line drawing or wee doodle, um, that would be great. It just starts to get you to encourage you to think about how you tell the story for the through the pictures as well. What are you wanting to try and tell us what's happening in your in your drawing? This, is, this book is also really good if, as an introduction to illustrated chapter books. It's really funny. It's really great. I mean, you can probably tell that just from the illustration there. It's, a, it's, quite, it's quite a funny one. Um, you've just seen the pug with the lines coming, coming from that. That helps to convey how, his emotion and everything else. Who could, who could predict that just having some lines coming out of someone, um, out of a character, just conveys so much emotion, <laughs> whether they're angry or happy or um it's it's a really it's a really interesting way of um presenting the drawing okay so i'll give you i'll give you another wee minute or so just to finish up your, your doodles or your illustrations. Um, let us know how you're getting on, if, um, if you're enjoying that. <laughs> if you've given up, if you've gone, nope, nope, can't do it. It's hard, it's, it's, it's quite hard. Um, I was trying it yesterday um, and I, I struggled and my partner did as well. He was trying to draw, a, um, similarly to creating your own superhero series, he was trying to draw like a lizard attacking a city. Um, and it is, it's, it's quite difficult, um, but it is good because it really fo forces you to think about how you're drawing and what, what it's trying to say. So while it is quite different to writing traditionally or reading traditionally as well, um, it encourages lots of different other skills as well. Uh, Hannah, <laughs> Hannah says um, she thinks that Powerpug gets angrier and angrier and then casts a magic spell on Adventure Up to get revenge. He yeah, has Powerpug after all. I mean, this is true. This is very true. Okay, great. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy taking part in the activity and it's encouraged you to think about uh, the different um, opportunities that there are with, uh, with, read it, uh, with, with drawing illustrations, but also um, how you can use comics and graphic novels, how you can introduce them to your child, um, even if they're a bit unsure about them. Um, oh, so Claire's just said, my son has said the pug's son comes in and he is tiny, proving the dad is really the biggest pug of all. <laughs> Ad says he was he's even smaller than you. Ad then needs help and helped out by Powerpug. Oh, that's brilliant! I love that. <laughs> that's great. And see, that's your son. That so that's it's encouraging like the the creative writing there already. But um, that's that's brilliant. Yes, yeah, he believes now size is not important. Yeah. So it's got its own wee message just from 
just from that page alone. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, thank you to Claire's son as well. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and it, and it helps you think about the different ways you could introduce illustrated chapter books or, or comics at home um, and encourage activities with them as well. Um, you can, so I'm just going to mention here that you can use our Scottish Book Trust website to find inspiration and get started with some activity ideas as well. We've got a wealth of resources there that are full of activity ideas and inspiration if you're looking for somewhere to get started. Um, lots of ideas like we've mentioned today as well. Um, so there's also our Home Activities Hub, which is regularly updated as well. It's um, designed specifically for families. So if you're looking for ideas for some fun learning opportunities at home, that's a really great place to start. Um, and it's all filterable by age and things as well. So you can find things quite easily, hopefully. Um, and you can also sign up for our newsletter for families too. Um, Hannah might be able to put it in the chat for you so that you can um, sign up um, if you'd like to. So. It's got um, all of our news um, and information for families um, and, and it keeps updated with any new resources and any news that we add that might be of interest to you. So if you've added any new resources that might be helpful, they'll be, they'll be on the newsletter. So it's a really good thing to sign up to if you're interested in finding out lots of new ideas and activities for trying at home. Um, and we've also got lots of other book lists and recommendations for illustrated chapter books on a variety of themes as well on our website and recommendations for graphic novels for younger readers too. Um, so be sure to have a wee look at them if, if you're interested in other recommendations that we maybe haven't mentioned today. Um, so I also wanted to mention this to you. Um, one of the most inspiring activities that you can do with your child when it comes to encouraging reading and writing, I know that um, someone was saying in the chat that they uh, find it's difficult to um, encourage the child to read and not have, doesn't, yeah, he's full of energy and good stories, doesn't have it and not interested in reading. This is a really, really great thing to introduce to children who are maybe a little bit reluctant about reading. Um, and it's, it's watching an author event. Um, it can be really, really inspiring for them um, and spark a real love of reading just, just from watching, watching an author event. So this is our BBC Authors Live programme. Um, and it's in its 10th year, so it's been running for 10 years now, um, running events throughout the school term, throughout the year. Um, and it's continuing to bring the magic of author events to children and young people across Scotland. Um, so these are all broadcasted by the BBC in Glasgow um, and there are events for all age groups as well. Um, so you can filter on our website um, by age group too if you're keen to find some that are your child's age range. Um, and this is a really good way to put a focus on reading. Um, and they're also available on iPlayer as well now, which is great. So they've been shown during lockdown, um, they've been shown on BBC Scotland, um, some of the author events to help support learning at home. But some are also available still on iPlayer. So if you wanted to have a wee look on there too, um, please do. Um, there's also over 80 events that are available to watch on demand on our website. So again, as I say, uh, if you're interested in having a wee look there, you can have a wee, you can filter the website, have a wee look, um, try out some of them, see, see if what you think. Um, both Liz Pichon, who we mentioned earlier about um, the Tom Gates writer, uh, she has an author's live event. And Connie Hook, who's in the image there, um, who wrote um, Cooking the Most Annoying Boy in the World. That just came out last year and um, they both talk about the process of writing and drawing and um, which is quite interesting and it's really really good events talking about the importance of illustration in their books and how it's um, inspired the writing process for them as well. You can also watch Chris Riddell who we mentioned earlier and um, who explores illustration and the importance of drawing as you can see there he's doing a draw along um, which is great so it encourages the children to draw as part of the event as well as part of their writing process. Um, and you can also be inspired to do some creative writing by Pamela Butchart and Sarah McIntyre's exciting events as well. So there's a few for you to think about if you're thinking about um, some author events that you'd like to try and watch. Um, and they're all free as well, so say you don't have to pay for them at all, and they're all free and available to watch online. Um, and they also have some linked activities for each event as well. Um, so if you do watch an event and you want to do an activity afterwards, there's some inspiration for you there too. Um, so I also just wanted to highlight some other resources for you that are separate to uh, the Scottish Book Trust website. So um, Barrington Stoke is a publisher that I wanted to highlight to you. They publish books which are in a dyslexia friendly format, but they're also perfect for children who are bridging between picture and chapter books. Their Little Gem series is a really great prime example of this actually. Um, and they have such a variety of titles all published with illustrations and in an accessible format for children. For example, um, a couple that you 
might be interested in is um, The Unlucky Eleven by Phil Earle. Um, it's all about a school football team who have been impacted by a curse. I um, can only imagine what happens in that. <laughs> and Special Delivery by Jonathan Mears is a really lovely story um, about a boy who befriends an elderly lady with dementia. So it just shows you, I mean, just two from that series alone, um, so different um, for different, different children, lots of different topics in there. Um, but it means that there's lots to get started with as well. So if you're interested in them, I definitely look on their website. They've got a whole um, list on the website of the Little Gem series if you're looking at and um, wanting to try some of them. If you want to start making reading and writing a part of your home routine as well in the re return to school, you could take, in part, take part in Free Writing Friday, which was inspired by Presta Cowell, the Children's Laureate. It's a weekly activity where children are able to write freely once a week. Um, so it's purely for their own enjoyment. It doesn't get checked over, it doesn't get taken into school um, for the teacher to look over or anything like that. It's um, completely free up to them what they do. Um, you're of course welcome to look at their work um, and read their stories, whatever, whatever they do, but you're not, it's not there to be um, marked, I suppose, um, or to uh, see what the quality is or what, what you know, um, how good or bad it is. It's just, it's just to be an opportunity for them to write as, as they want to. And without the worry of it being looked at by adults or by, by teachers, um, children um, feel much more freer, much freer to write and draw the work that suited them um, from what we've seen uh, from people taking part in it already. Um, and they also know that the work is produced for themselves as well, which is quite a, a lovely thing. So often children are producing things for school or um, as part of homework and things, but actually this is just something they can do for themselves. So it's quite a, quite a creative um, expression, freedom of expression in a creative way. Um, it's also a really great way of allowing children to be creative and to begin to experiment with and explore their ideas. So if they've got ideas that they've not really been able to explore yet, this is a really great way of doing that. And it fits into the routine. So if you do it every Friday, it happens every week. Um, and then they kind of get into the routine of it as well. Another um, publisher I wanted to highlight to you was Deco Comics. Um, these are designed to be more accessible as well for children. Um, and they encourage learning for children in comic format. They're really, really great, these. And um, they cover subjects such as math, STEM, um, in a way that really helps children with engage, uh, engage with school um, and learning, but are less engaged with reading. So if your child is really not interested in reading, but you're wanting to make sure that they still are able to access um, all of the information that they need to. Deco Comics is really, really great for that. I think the person who um, runs it and um, who, you know, kind of operates the, the comic business, he, he has dyslexia himself and it was kind of inspired by his experience of school. Um, so they're, they're really great for um, encouraging learning through comics as well. Also, um, I just recommend you to try, be open to trying different types of books with your child. It is really hard to know what they're going to like or um, to get them, in, what, what book will get them engaged, but you just keep trying different types of things with them. Um, why not try a new genre? Um, if they, you know, if they maybe liked fantasy before, maybe try adventure. Um, just, just be open to, to different things. Um, or some short stories as well. Short stories are great because it gives them a flavour of what the story is about rather than like a full book. Um, so those are really great to try as well. And we always want to recommend that reading, all reading is good reading at Scottish Book Trust. Um, and there are books to suit every taste and interest. So keep reading aloud to them, even when they start reading independently. Um, there's so much to be gained from it. And it also creates an ongoing conversation between what you're both reading as well. And just to finish up the session there, um, I wanted to leave you with this quote, which I think is quite powerful. I um, found it when we were kind of putting together the slides. Um, I think it's really wonderful and it kind of encompasses the power of pictures um, and illustrations when, when, you're, when you're emerging readers. So it says, I love the way words and pictures work together on a page. I've also noticed when wise words have visuals added to them, they seem to travel further. So it just goes to show like the impact of that pictures can have on text can really make it much more powerful um, than if the text was just by itself. And that's from Art Matters, which is again by Chris Riddell, a new game, which is a lovely book too. So if you have any questions, um, I'd love to take some time to answer them just now. Um, also, please feel free to keep in touch. Um, there's my email address there. Um, you can let me know if you have any questions about our programmes in the future or if you want to keep up to date with Scottish Book Trust News. And I'm also on Twitter there. There's my Twitter handle, so you can connect with me there too if you want to speak to me. 
Um, but I'll just have a look in the chat just now and see if we have any questions. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so Hannah's put the family's newsletter in there for you. So if you want to uh, sign up for that, then I'd encourage you and you'll get information about all of our uh, new resources and events and activities that get added. That will be of interest to you. And the uh, um, Authors Live page as well. So if you want to have a wee look on there and filter it by age, um, have a wee look at all the different types of author events. There's so many different kinds as well. You know, there's authors talking about the writing process but then there's draw alongs and um, there's also really interactive ones too and um, all on different themes as well some are on um, nature some are on science some are you know they, they cover so many different uh, areas of the curriculum too so they're really really great Okay, if there's no questions, then that's, that's absolutely fine. And um, as I say, if you want to get in touch, you can with me directly. I'm always um, happy to receive emails from people. Um, or you can check the Scottish Book Trust website as well if you're looking for some inspiration. Um, but yeah, we can just finish up there for you then. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Hope that was interesting for you and you've got some new tips and ideas um, to go away with today. Um, and good luck for school starting next week. Um, please do keep in touch and thank you. Goodbye.